Carolina Hurricanes in five games. The rounds, the road to the Stanley Cup doesn't get any easier as Boston has no choice but to face the number two seed, the second best team in the Atlantic Division, and probably one of the worst teams for Boston to arguably face, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, last time these two played, it was a 3-2 Lightning victory in a meaningless round-robin hockey game because Boston just didn't care about the round-robin at all. And still, it was a one-goal game because every game between Boston and Tampa, more or less, is a one-goal game. Uh, these teams, two teams in the regular season, which was, God, ever ago, it feels like, um, Tampa Bay beat them three out of four times, and three out of those four games decided by one goal. But for the Tampa Bay Lightning, they are going to be without Steven Stamkos for, who knows, um, with an injury, um, which could give Boston a pretty strong advantage at the center position because Boston has three, four, five deep at that center position if you want to include Sean Corrali and Par Lindholm. Um, but Boston, again, uh, going back to um, the third line of Coyle, Bjork, and Richie, I, I thought we were done with the Anders Bjork experiment uh, in the playoffs. Um, but Nick Richie brought into the lineup, of course, for size and strength and endurance. Um, but I would have rather seen, instead of Anders Bjork, throw Corrali back on that line so you get a big mashing third line of Corrali, Coyle, and uh, Nick Richie. And putting Kyle Lynn home with Chris Wagner and Joaquin Nordstrom. Other note for Tampa Bay Lightning. Andre Vasilevsky has played every game since the return to play. He's played in all nine games. Including oh, eight games, I think. Eight games. Um, which, well, well, arguably, for argument's sake, you could say one of those games because it was the, like, Super long, like quadruple five overtime game against Columbus. That counts as another game in its own right. Um, even with three days rest, Andre Vasilevsky has got to start showing some kind of fatigue as we continue onward. And with the way that this round is structured, which we will get into later in this video, um, there's going to be some fatigue definitely going on. Um, so it is Boston against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Game one of round number two on the Ruins. Recap show. We start things off in the first period. Our starting goaltenders Yaroslav Halak and Andre Vasilevsky. Andre Vasilevsky, as far as I know, I think he's the only goaltender for Tampa Bay. I, I've yet to see them play their backup. I think it's Curtis McElhaney. I could be wrong on that one. Uh, 29 seconds into the game, a weak, weak, weak cross-checking call against the captain Zdeno Chara leads to nothing on the car on the uh, Tampa Bay power play. 11 minutes later, it's an equally weak holding holding call on Mikhail Sergachev. So just weak penalties to start between these two teams that are very physical and are going to remain hopefully very physical for the remainder of this series. Uh, but we go. And it's a great play by Brad Marchand here as Charlie McAvoy up the ice to Brad Marchand. He has a potential two-on-one with a David Pasternak, but David Pasternak has nothing in the tank left. So Marchand just holds the puck, holds possession away from like three Tampa Bay Lightning players uh, before giving it over to a Brandon Carlo who coming right off the bench. Speaking of coming right off the bench, Patrice Bergeron changed for, in for Brandon Carlo. And Brandon Carlo, again, he must have been a Boston Red Sox fan growing up because he bunts it into the back of the net. Charlie Coyle gets his third of the playoffs, makes it a 1-0 hockey game. Just a great individual effort from Brad Marchand here to find Brandon Carlo. And also just to keep possession in the offensive zone for so long as he waited for reinforcements here. It's a 1-0 lead going into the second period and in the second period it is another weak penalty this time it goes up against Victor Hedman for a, a call on tripping against Anders Bjork where the ref who actively saw it said no penalty but the guy over in Schwinnigan down over by Yaroslav Halak saw it and said that's a penalty I 
there's got to be some kind of consistency where the referee who saw the play can overturn the person who actively called the penalty um, because that was just a garbage call. And I, I would agree with most Tampa Bay fans who saw that and were like, what the hell is that? It was far from a trip. Anyway, but it does lead to a Boston power play, so I'll take it as uh, it's a clinical power play from that very top-heavy unit. Um, Bergeron, Pasternak, Marshawn, Krug, and Krejci. As Tory Krug has the puck over at the blue line, he does a little exchange with David Krejci, and David Krejci takes it down. This is a nice, subtle move by David Pasternak. David Pasternak's hanging out over pretty much damn near by the goalpost, forces the Tampa Bay defender to cover him, and then just as the Tampa Bay defender is puck-watching David Krejci, he kind of just sneaks out into his favorite spot. Krejci finds him, and it is a one-time shot from David Pasternak for the goal on the power play. Makes it to nothing. Points in seven straight games for David Krejci as playoff Krejci is starting to show up in a really positive way. Hopefully, he can maintain some semblance of momentum. I mean, that point streak's going to end at some point. There is going to be a game where he's not going to have a point. Um, it's inevitable, but hopefully he can start taking over. A little bit later on, uh, we get a scrum, another power play for Tampa, and Tampa really starting to get back into this game. Um, they would end the second period out shooting the Boston Bruins 18-7, to but Boston and Yaroslav Halak shut the door, and they hold on to this lead and take a 2-0 lead into the third period. In the third period, and another great effort from the top line as Brad Marchand gets it deep he takes it behind the net he loses the puck to Ryan McDonough in a puck battle but here comes five, multiple times Selkie nominated Bra Patrice Bergeron to steal the puck from Ryan McDonough hands it over to David Pasternak with a saucer pass to a Brad Marchand who has a wide open net just a beautiful play here from the top line Defense into offense, quick transition, quick turnover, just beautiful execution all around. Makes it 3 nothing, and the Bruins looking very, very good, but Tampa Bay is still surging. And towards the end of the game, a little bit of a scary moment here as uh, Andre Palat on the wall, he hands it over to Braden Point. Braden Point takes a pass that gets deflected off of David Krejci, Ends up on the stick of Victor Hedman and a quick shot and McAvoy in front of the net. It bounces off his shin and it goes in. Makes it a 3-1 game. And Tampa Bay will pull Andre Vasilevsky with two minutes to go. And a minute 14 remaining. It's a great umbrella play from Johnson, Hedman, or yeah, Johnson, Hedman, and Shattenkirk. With the umbrella, great puck movement. It goes to Victor Hedman. He takes the shot, and again, it's on repeat. It's off of Charlie McAvoy and in. The poor kid can't catch a break. Victor Hedman, second of the game, and makes this game closer than it had any right to be. As um, it's a 3-2 game, but for that remainder of the third period, Boston is able to shut the door and take game one, 3-2. And this, um, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot more of the second period and third period Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, they were arguably at most some points the better team, although Boston had very solid stretches of momentum too. This series, expect it to go seven games. If it does not, it is a criminal, criminal for the NHL. Um, NHL, of course, wants this to go seven because uh, these are the two best teams, arguably two of the three or four best teams still in the playoffs. Um, it's a shame that one of them is going to go out in the second round, but that's the way it's going to work. Not only should you expect this game to go seven, you should expect Tampa to maybe get better. Um, don't know, because I, I haven't really looked it up, unfortunately, what the status is for Steven Stamkos. Is he going to return in this series? Because if he does, that makes Tampa that much more deadly. Um, and the weirdness of how this series is set up. So game one was Sunday. Game two is tomorrow on Tuesday. 
Game number three, directly afterwards on Wednesday. So, two and three are back-to-backs, as are games six and seven in this series. So, six and seven back-to-back, two, three back-to-back. Um, the question is, do you see at all in this series, even on back-to-back nights, does either team go to their backup goaltender? Um, so, will we see Dan Vladar make his first ever appearance in a Stanley Cup playoff game in the first game he's ever played in the Toronto bubble. I know he just got a three game three year extension. Do we see Curtis McElhaney? I think that's the Tampa Bay backup. Who knows? Yes, Tampa Bay does have a backup. It's it is a thing. All go all teams must. Do we see either one of them play? Or do both teams ride their number one even on back to back games? It's a weird playoff series. But expect it to go seven, and let's go quickly to finish this out to the three stars of the game. Star number three, Yaroslav Halak, coming up huge. 35 of 37 shots saved for a 946 save percentage. Star number two, David Pasternak with a goal and an assist, that goal being on the power play. And Brad Marchand, just great effort overall. Goal and an assist for him, that goal being the technical game winner. Boston looking to keep this momentum as they play on Tuesday night for game number two. We'll see you then on the next Bruins Recap Show.